Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to APAC North. It's our match of the day. It's Damon Kia versus Cyclops Athlete Gaming. It's CAG versus DWG Kia. Whoa, so excited. Welcome back to the analyst desk. <laughs> I'm Alistair Medic with me. All right, Jess. I'm in my Kia. <laughs> Rum, rum. I don't think anybody's ever done that in a Kia, that was to like be completely the... honest. <laughs> oh, you just haven't driven driven it. <laughs> no, I don't have a driver's license, which... Really? What? No, I'm 27, almost 28 now, and I don't have a driver's license. I live in Europe, come on. I take the bus. Well, not... The, well, tram or... I was going to call you the hostess with the mostest, but you're the hostess with the leastest. No, I prefer not to spend my money on frivolous buys. I already have... You still to. get a license. One day. Though... Jess, fresh, we're back on here. And you know what? We needed a license to get here in APAC North and talk about this match of the day, Damon Kia versus Cyclops. And I want to turn to you first, Jess, for the lowdown on Cyclops because mm. it, it looks like they're not able to find their footing here in stage three. Trouble in the waters for Cyclops Athlete Gaming. And well, I think... Uh, Cyclops aren't really machines, are they? They're technically like meant to be like monster human versions, right? Well, there's nothing scary about Cyclops at the moment. In fact, they're an easy prey for almost every team in the league right now. So for me, currently, after getting their first place season place overtaken in that very last match, not only do they not have first place in APAC North for this entire year anymore, they are also tied on points with T1 at the bottom of the leaderboard. This is unheard of unprecedented with this kind of team so they need to pick it back up they have these like teeth sharp teeth on their logo mm -hmm. just, just they got no them bite. molars there's nope. Nope. no bite honestly They're well just a set of gums at the moment. set of gums yeah <laughs> honestly it's a good way to put it there but damn on kia they're also feeling the heat mm. they are the they're feeling consistently inconsistent and the only thing that's consistent about Dan Wonky is just how good Yas is. Mm -hmm. And Yas can carry this team basically on his own. And we were looking to, after the major, we was hoping that there would be some kind of play style around Rin and Yas together pow, pow. and Pow Pow and yeah. just going out, stomping teams, mm -hmm. kind of playing very simple Steve, but going out and stomping teams, really running over them. And it's not really happened. It's Dan Wonky that have ended up being stomped. Yeah. And I think I'm going to harp on about it a lot more about the map pool mm -hmm. that's very limited mm -hmm. and i think teams have figured that out a little bit they work out which is the weakest map that we can get down one here on they yeah. play a very similar style most of the time i dare say they're very easily easily counterable mm -hmm. and i think that's contributed to a, f a few factors including that kind of mexico major hangover that we spoke about yeah that was the word i was looking for earlier hangover. by the way yeah you said something about drinking and drunk, and, drunk yeah i yeah. mean drunk hangover yeah i was getting there eventually yeah, Mexico still hangs around in your head, huh? Oh, I couldn't even breathe in Mexico. I had a hangover every day there. Elevation. Elevation really hits you hard. Well, my friends, let's take a look at our map for the series. Cyclops versus Damwon Kia. And we're going to head over to chance. Villa. Cyclops on the attacking side is Damwon Kia. have chosen defense. Jess, what's up? This is ridiculous. Okay, you were speaking about the fact that teams can manipulate Damwon Kia's very mm -hmm. small and narrow map pool. What is one of their most known maps? Villa. Why? I mean, you, when you're against Damon Kia, you choose between Chalet, Oregon Club or Villa. It's as simple as that. It's a, it's a direct choice that Cyclops have chosen to go there. Yeah, but why? My question is why? When you know it is a signature map for your opponent, they have such a narrow map pool, you could have targeted any other map. When I say any other map, of course, Damon Kia got rid of coastline, so it could be friend, done. Yeah. But you could have gone much more narrow than that. To give you a bit of an indication as to what I mean, where is it here? Other than the fact that we have a very good win rate from Cyclops on Villa, which may be the saving grace for them in that, okay, both in their regional league and, of course, in uh, Tier 1, they have a good win rate on it. That, to me, doesn't scream anything other than we're willing to take you to your best playground mm -hmm. and see whether or not it works out for us, you know, another time, a fifth time since June the 1st. Number it's, one Japanese team, man. Yeah, it's, it's a strange one from Cyclops, and we'll have to ask them, you know, should they win? Yeah, why they I chose would love Villa? to know. Because, you know... Dan Wonky haven't looked good on Oregon, for example, or Clubhouse. So I didn't have this kind of... Villa would have been the fourth map I'd have ended up expecting this to agree. go to. I do the agree. Available ones. Before Surprise, we go, yes. Before yes. we go, the only time they've played it in Tier 1 League is against T1. 
and T1 brought four rounds against them to their seven, and they were barely able to win very close rounds. That one? If that no, this is no Cyclops. Cyclops. And if T1 were playing how they played today, they would have beaten Cyclops that day. Because I agree. Cyclops weren't I agree. particularly good, but managed to I fall agree. over the line. They would have lost that. Yep. A lot of surprises still, even though we're nearing the end of this stage with APAC North. Fresh Jess, thank you very much. It's time for our match of the day. It's Cyclops versus Damon Kia. And we've got Ace and Death take us through it. Enjoy. Stepping very much into the Dragon's Lair. Dan Wonk here have not lost on this map since March, where they, well, in Tier 1, I guess, in playing in APAT North, to Cloud9 back in March. It has been a long time since the team has handed them a defeat in this competition. Ace, clearly, Cyclops, after a mm, shaky start to Stage 3, shall we say, are choosing this to be the map to try and beat them on. Not too sure about that one, Chief. Well, I mean, you know, there's another way to look at it, Des, and that's whatever Cyclops have been trying so far hasn't been working. So, you know, you might as well maybe come out with something a little bit unexpected, but they certainly seem to be ramping up the difficulty for themselves in taking down one Kia to Villa. You are absolutely right. We're going to get into the operator bands now. It's going to start off with Dan Wong Kia to begin with. They will take our first attacker out, being that they start on the defence, which I don't want to pile on, Des, but what this is just another positive for Dan Wong Kia is that they're starting on the defence of Villa and they've taken the Monty out. They're targeting Cyclops big time. Though. Look, I feel like a broken record at this point, and I shall stay one. They don't really get easily fixed. Uh, in the Japanese league, there is a 30% ban rate against Monty purely because of Cyclops. Anaton, we saw his drop shotting Monty ways in Mexico, an absolute terror at the best of times. So it comes as no big surprise that it is taken away and denied from them here. Thatcher and Kai, we saw in our game earlier on today between Talon on Fav on this exact map, a good pairing to take away one after to the other and the final band coming through is going to be the Valkyrie meaning the mirror stays online though eh? so pick that when we've seen it left open teams have enjoyed utilizing at various points on this map in particular defending sites like aviator and gaming means you can take a mirror up towards trophy and statue and use it for that extended hold something that we didn't see involving a mirror earlier on today but definitely saw shields and such being employed for that exact purpose it will be a start for Dan Monk here in dining and kitchen we spoke about this last week as well alternate away from starting in Aviator games, just keeping things a little bit different, at least on that first site. Looks to be the game plan once again, whereas on the attacking side, look at that ace again. That that combo we spoke about earlier on it's today impressive. of Lion to KB, Finca, Flores going to be a nightmare for dealing with utility as well. This is a pretty scary lineup coming out of Cyclops. Very, very oppressive. Big six pick coming in. Zofia switching out to Zofia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little mental game there. I think sometimes you just want to put it in the head of your opponents that they don't necessarily know what they're facing, even though that is the lineup that you're going to bring now then. We're going to head, as you say, down to that bottom floor to begin with for Dan Wonkia with them trying to lock it down. Katsang on the pulse is one to watch. Katsang's had a good couple of games over the last few play days and underneath with that heartbeat scanner could prove a bit of a nightmare for Cyclops if they don't deal with him. If you... Caught in your eye the win-loss record for both these teams just at the, the beginning of the match as we were loading into the map. You'll notice that it's been a bit hit and miss for both. I think that is fair to say so far in Stage 3. Mm -hmm. More miss for Cyclops than Dan Wonkier, I think. But Dan Wonkier have still certainly had their moments where they've come out one week and looked absolutely terrifying. And then the following week, like a ranked team. And you just, yeah. what is going on between these two performances? Now, unfortunately for Cyclops, Cyclops last play day was one of the bad performances for Dan Wonkia, so maybe we get that electrifying performance today. I know you are a massive Dan Wonkia fan, but it's why I struggle to, I've predicted them today, I think they will win this game because Cyclops have looked a bit, had a torrid time so far in the last few weeks. But for Dan Wonkia, as you say, it is that back and forth nature that makes them so hard to predict or understand, and it can be hard to get behind a team, but you're not quite sure which version is going to show up on a given day. But I think against Cyclops again, who've looked shaky at points, it could be the day. Iagator snaking his way down here inside of the basement gets a wonderful kill as well. That's uh, an angle you don't often see held very often. You're not expecting to players to play through basement, but Rin caught red-handed down there. The Goyo taken off the board and the C4 denied away. It's a big start. It's a, it's a great start coming out for Cyclops there. Getting one of those roamers taken down. Rin, we know, can be a very impactful player, so just removing him from the board nice and early is so Certainly going to do Cyclops some favours. The Rotero drones are just going in one after another at the minute, finding 
piece of utility after piece of utility. Gatterada down in the basement, just being very cautious down there, straight into his ADS as he drops. It's as if there's a little bit of information to suggest that maybe there is still somebody playing down there. I don't think that's actually the case for Dan Wonk here. And from what I can see, everybody's sort of accounted for at the minute. Courted. He's going to account for Gatterada. Found himself a kill. He does get traded out by Suzuki. Three versus four. One minute 15 to go. Mm, I'm looking at the utility use coming out of the side of Cyclops too. They've gone through all their phone calls, all their EE1D scans. Everything has been used incredibly quickly as the last surge also comes out. So they don't want to deal with the shenanigans that Dan Wonkia like to employ. They want to keep them busy, make sure they're locked down on site and deal with them that way when they're more controlled. It's like herding sheep, it feels like, Ace. And while those sheeps are being lined up for the slaughterhouse, Cyclops with a decisive first round and Dan Wonkia not being able to benefit off that play style that normally works so well for them. The aggressive Roan game is what they're known for. Cyclops have just controlled it and read it like a book. Great start coming out from Cyclops there, as you say. Just well aware of Dan Wonkia. Seemed to be a step ahead at them every turn there. Just managing to get that first round. And we all came in thinking Dan Wonkia were going to have a bit of a field day here on Villa as it is one of their strongest maps. But Cyclops may be sending a message inside that first round to say it's not going to be all their way. But... But, and it is a big but, we've got to get up onto that top floor yet. We would still expect Aviator Games and Trophy Statuary to be strongholds for Dan Wonkia. We would expect them to lock those sites down twice each and get their four defensive rounds that would be the general expectation here. So this is a particularly important round for Cyclops. I know it's very early in the game to be saying that, but if Cyclops can get one of these top floor sites, they can then be looking towards a 3-3 half potentially, and that could be big for them going into the defense in the second half of things. And I've got to, I know I keep mentioning the skins, but the Cyclops one, oh. It's a beauty, isn't it's it? It's just beautiful. There's been, we always say, but there have been some real bangers coming out in the latest skin share packs. So definitely recommend checking those out if you haven't already. And no, we have not been mandated by our producers <laughs> to say that. <laughs> we just that love is because them. we just like them that much. I get, genuinely, me and Des were, uh, were actually in game when we looked at him for the first time and we just went through like, oh, I've just bought the Zyklops oh, I've just bought the, I've I just think, bought the Talon one. I think the exact words when we first saw them were, oh no, my wallet. Yeah, <laughs> and we knew very quickly bought four skins and many more short to follow. Let's see how this round plays out though. I really want to see the depth from the Dan One Kia squad here. Show that if you can't play the Rome game, you can hunker down and put out a really strong, solid side defense with enough disruption to keep Cyclops guessing. Here at least for the side of Cyclops, Cyclops, the focus is going to be up towards the northeast. A reminder that it is Aviator and Games. And if you recall and were watching earlier on today, if you weren't, well, you missed a screamer of an end to that game between Talon and Fab. But the north side control was never done well by the attacking team. And here, down one strike big. A C4 coming out from Rin to pick a kill up onto Gatorada. And those EE1Ds quickly removed from action. Maybe a little bit of a lack of attention to that lower side, which is something that we did see in the previous game. And a little bit of a lack of attention to Ayagator there. Ah. Costs two men ah. on the side of Dan Wonkia, ah. and it's all going in Cyclops' favour once again. First it's Ayagator, then it's Black Ray. They managed to get themselves in with kill oh. after kill <laughs> after kill. Shut down the man inside of sight. Anaton finishes off the round. Cyclops 2-0. And boy, oh boy, this looks like a different Cyclops, Des. Quite possibly, quite possibly. They responded really well to one man being taken out by picking up a couple of kills of their own all on the back of Iagator as well and that really got that round propelling towards an end pretty quickly. Aviator game is going to be attempted once again by Dan Wonky and not too surprised because the start of it I don't think was particularly bad. They did have the C4 playing below. They had Goyo Shields up towards the north side to provide some contestation early on into the round but the aggression that came out of Cyclops, they didn't care about no shields. They marched their way forward and found further kills. A 2-0 start for Cyclops is a dream start for them, but a nightmare for Dan Wonkia. It's certainly looking that way at the moment. They're going to head straight back to Aviator Games, see if they can turn out a different result, but if they're going to want to do that, they certainly need to... It was almost like they had that advantage early on, Dan Wonkia, from using that verticality. Rin managing to get a nice Nitro onto Gatorada to start us off, but then even though they were operating on that lower floor, they didn't pick up on the entry of Ayagator. He was able to just march up the red stairs and take Take himself two absolute freebies up there to just turn things on their head. So great play from Cyclops again, just seeming to be one step ahead. It's like they've got the playbook of Dan Wonkia and 
just know exactly what they're going to do before they do it at the minute. So Dan Wonkia, they need to come out and maybe try and make themselves a little bit less predictable, maybe look for the unexpected. And that, I think, is somewhat what they're leaning into here as well. The Goyo disappearing and instead being replaced by Rin on the Alibi. So still having a shield to bring along. But generally, you see with the 1.5 now coming through on the Storm that, you know, Alibi can be used as the Roma is, of course, a three-speed, has those decoys down, which can be useful for information, assuming someone bolts into one or accidentally shoots it as a reaction. You know, much more mobile of wager than something like a Goya would be, but of course you do lose the C4. Either way, that's the one change in this round. I guess you could look back towards the Herbana coming in for Suzu C as well. Maybe they're expecting more of a dug-in defense coming out of Dan Wan Kira and wants a way to breach through, say, Vault Wall or something along those lines. But here's Rin looking to be aggressive early on, looking to contest. Also, we ask off to his right-hand side. So the two of them looking to disrupt. We all saw how that played out last time round. We see the first attempt to open up the soft wall into Trophy next to Rin there. Yeah. Fails as the ADS picks out the utility, but then the second is successful and forces him oh. back. Oh, uh -huh. dear, oh, dear. It's going from bad to worse what here, Des. He Rin gets the opener again, but this time it's on to Oogie Man. And that is not ideal for Dan Wong. Kia 5-4 now in favour of Cyclops, and that's before we even hit the halfway mark. I'm not even sure what Rin was aiming for there because he was looking down south in towards, you know, sight and back in towards maps. But I don't know, maybe it's a drone that he saw, whatever it might be. Not the ideal way to start the round, especially when you've made the smart call of saying, look, we've wasted 80 seconds. Let's get back to sight with all five left alive. And finally, there is going to be something coming the way of Dan Wonkir. It's Yas with the opener, the real opener in the round onto Iagator. Yas managing to answer back. Black Ray taking a ton of damage as well. Found himself at half health. Rin just trying to hold on to this 90 corridor for as long as possible. Pushed back by a flash and then finished off by Black Ray. Great kill coming in from the man on the Flores from the 90 window there, just allowing Gatarada to get in there aggressively on the Lion and establish himself with the support of Suzuki as well, looking to get that vault open and just make the life inside of sight here an absolute misery for Dan Wonkia. The one thing that does baffle me a little bit, they've got four sets of flashes. You don't really need four sets of flashes. You'd look to normally bring an operator that brings along, I don't know, frags or something to help you burn out this jammer that is on the other side. They tried to go and six it. It was not successful. Yas finds himself a second in the round, and at this point, you're going to find Cyclops just have to work their way through all of this bulletproof utility and don't have a choice. But one way to do it is to march into the players themselves. One more for Gatorada, the swing on the doorway to the right-hand side. Oh, my God, what a flick onto Katsang. Gets traded out by Kota, but if Suzu C wins this, a lot of it comes off the back of Gatorada on that line with a wonderful flick onto the map's door. That one versus one descends now with only 10 seconds still remaining. Sees the man step out, and Suzu C finds it. That is a round you'll be looking at and saying, Gatorada, Thank you so much. I think it's a round that you'll look at and Katsang will be absolutely kicking themselves off the back of that one. They will know that is an absolute freebie, a fight they should not be losing. Coming through that door there, they had a full side-on angle of the Lion of Gatarada, Des. They had a free second, two seconds at the beginning of that engagement. You cannot lose that one, as you say. Gatarada just able to somehow wheel around 90 degrees and find the head of the man and it really did give Cyclops the opening they needed and Dan Juan Kierdez, there's only one way to describe this and they're rattled. Just noticed, by the way, they've got uh, gym equipment in the room with them, just in all the cameras. You can see on Yassi's screen the uh, dip machine at the back, you've got the bench with the weights on. Just in case you're uh, feeling a bit... Healthy body, yeah. healthy mind, does. Uh, to a level, but I would love to know how many times a day potentially they come off a scrim and just think, you know what I want to do? I want to get a drink. I want to lift weights. I want to get a sick pump on. I want to get a sick pump on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> magical, but it is a non-magical start coming out for Dan Wonkia. Three rounds down here on the first three of Cyclops. Now, I will give some lean. The rounds have got closer. Round one, four players left alive for Cyclops. Second round, three players. Last round, one with that magical flick from Gatorada doing a lot to help them out. So they are getting closer, albeit having already bled three rounds. You'll be asking questions here as to where the wins do start to come in. There is going to be a small change coming in, and sure enough, the, the Kavira, like bait pick coming out has scared the 
other side into picking up the Nomad, just to make sure there aren't flanks coming up in the late round, because we know what Kavira excels at, being that disruptive mid to late round operator that gets in, gets the interrogation down, and it completely cuts off and destroys the flow that a team has got. you got to remember, Des, that's three defensive rounds that have been lost as well. You know, and as we all know, a defensive round on Villa is actually worth five. So it, that's the equivalent of losing 15 rounds early on, Des. You know, that's the that's what we're talking here. Obviously, a joke, but the defence on Villa cannot be taken lightly. You know, we do expect teams to come out with a majority, and that's certainly not going to be the case for Dan Wonkia now. Not possible. The best they can hope for is to level things up here. We'll see how much that tactical timeout has done for them, how much it manages to help them just change the momentum here. Can they slam the brakes on this runaway train that is Cyclops right now? And it's heading for them, Des. The horn is sounding, but can they get themselves off the tracks or not? That's going to be the big question. I'm quite a fan of the cap can here, admittedly. You know, for many, you look at it and go, oh, rank pick, like, why would you want to pick something like Slow that? Slow things down. It slows things down. down. And I always say, as soon as you see one trap, you know there are four more waiting around the map for you that you need to drone out. You've got to be careful. Otherwise, late rounds, you might just find yourself rotating into a huge chunk of lost HP and potentially even death. And that can be the sort of thing that does secure rounds for the defenders. At least on this start, though, you've got a bit of a split coming out from the side of Cyclops. You've got three of them looking up towards the north and the northeast. Black Ray coming in out towards the lower side of Astro Stairs. So the sort of thing that we, you know, complained about in our early game today between Talon and Fab about single direction attacks. At least here for Cyclops, we are seeing that multifaceted, multi-angled attack coming through that applies pressure from different directions. That is the peak hole opened in the East Breach then. That is just going to hopefully keep Katsang at bay. I think that's what they're hoping for there. But just leaving that little bit in between is going to allow impact nades to just rain in one after another and take off those further um, ex Kairos pellets. Now, Suzuki should still have some left. I would expect them to be able to get more of a window open in the breach there. They've only got one impact nade left on Rin, so if they get another two shot on there, burn that last impact, um, we should see Suzuki's got ten left, so that'll leave eight still to open up plenty of lines of sight, so no major problems there. Woogie Man is well aware that he's going to be pushed from 90, but he doesn't even get a further second to react as Iagator steps up and takes the man down. A rough game for the Woogie Man so far as he's gone zero and four. If it's not his own team killing him, it's the enemy days. He just cannot get into this one. Not quite like the boogeyman today, that's for sure. Frightening no kids are popping out under the bed. It's just not his vibe on this day. Hopefully we see him warm up in the second half, but really this is where most teams shine is in that first half. Branaton also being down by a C4 on the push through. It's definitely not looking too bad for them. Rin even finding Iagator. So, two kills down to the south, or at least a down, does keep Cyclops slowing down. Of course, keeping a close eye on where those cat can traps can be. As Suzuki finds another onto Rin. Rin, maybe a little bit bold there in challenging onto that angle immediately, and rightly so, loses out to the reverse repel. Anaton does get collected during that, so we'll be back up to 20 HP. He needs to just be careful how he takes his fights and exactly where and when. Cortad's going to find a headshot onto Black Ray now then, here comes the challenge onto the Red Stairs. Katsang just looking to get aggressive out of sight with the Malusi here and Dan Wonk here just doing everything they can to try and stem the tide here, but the pressure mounts as Gatarada comes in with a big LMG. Chug, 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 the bullets go. Finding the kill onto Katsang, Anaton onto Courted, and that leaves us now three versus one. Gatarada able to start getting that diffuser down. It's all to Yas. He's got one, two, three, and Yas finishes it off. Simple as ABC comes in with a big clutch, and Dan Wonk here needed that moment from their talisman. Absolutely huge coming out from Yas and you speak about him as the talisman, that is his role in this team. The big clutcher, and I thought that's when we saw Dan Wonk here back in Mexico. I was like, Rin might be the superstar of the tournament, but it's Yas that you always turn to to be the one to deliver consistently and deliver big things. Dan Wonk here sorely needed that round. They were down, of course, in the three versus one. Cyclops setting up the crossfire. They dealt with the flank of Coated coming in from the south side. They played it perfectly, but sometimes you just lose your gunfights, and Yas definitely hands one to them on a plate. That's one round at least for Dan one, but Ace, you can't rely on a clutch like that every single round. So what is going to happen in this next? 
See, I knew you were going to say that, Des, before I came. I, I, I wanted so badly to come in and say the tactical timeout, seeming to do something there, get down one <laughs> Kira round, but I can't even claim that when it's going to come down to a 1v3. That's the fight, realistically, that wins it for Yas there. Just takes a dip in the gunfight and hits the man wonderfully. It was three great, great shots from him to, to get that one over the line, but... We can't pin it down to that tactical timeout. We can't pin it down to anything other than a moment of magic. And as you say, Dan Wonkia, you cannot rely on those. We need to see more solid play throughout the rounds and not finding yourself in a 3v1 at the end, relying on that ability of Yas. So this time, they've got to use that as a foundation. They've broken the momentum. They've broken the win streak of Cyclops. Now it's time to start building on those foundations. Sometimes you've got to rely on a little bit of luck, Des. And Dan Wonkia have had that, but they've got to capitalise on it now. I think, again, it's the battle of the, you know, the massive oppression coming in from the lineup coming out of Cyclops. Speaking again towards the Lion, the KB, the two, you know, big anti-Roma operators, sometimes paired up with the Jackal by some teams if you really want to go overkill and shut a team down. But they can't play the normal play style. They want their force into these extended holds where they stay as a group of two or three and then pull themselves back onto site. It's what they're having to do so far. You've got Woogie still hanging out on the downstairs. I mean, ultimately, when you're in basement here as well, you're not in a massive threat position. If you can keep yourself moving around a lot, then chances are they're not going to hear you if you call out on the phone, which is why he's still enjoying a leisurely stroll down through where, I guess, all the wine is. I get to just up on the rappel there, pressuring onto the window, just looking to make sure nobody's trying to rotate around the top of Red Stairs. He's got that cut off. Gatorade are going to find the opener onto Cat. Sang and the entry game is something that Cyclops have been particularly strong on so far today. Coming in here with plenty of man advantages. We've got the Finker boost, we've got the E1D scan, and as you say, Des, this is very oppressive play from these attackers on the side of Cyclops, just making Dan Wonkia lives absolutely miserable at every single opportunity, just making them feel like they can't move, they can't breathe, like they're stifled inside of sight. And Gatterard is just going to hold that map's angle for the time being. He doesn't want to get over-aggressive here whilst that deployable shield is still in play. And as I say that, we've got Black Ray sending in the Rateros to try and take Utility out, but straight into a mute jammer. Anaton instead goes Route 1 in through that study window, takes the man from behind the shield. This could be big from Woogie Man, though. He's on a flank up the red stairs. He looks the wrong way and gets shut down by Gatterard. One versus three with still a minute to go. And Cyclops, they've pretty much got control of sight as well. Yeah, Cozy should be finding that one. Here comes the smoke as well, but I think it's going to miss the planter. Black Ray is going to be able to confirm and stick this one out. Back himself out into study. In fact, no, stays. Doesn't stick, doesn't twist. It's triple kill coming in for Cozy. The one more up towards the north side. Does he see the man? Surely he does, but Gatterada does not miss those. It's a 3k for him in the round. And Cozy, unfortunately, not able to clutch it out. They were almost able to rely on the 1v3 again there. I thought, are they going to make liars of us, Des, saying that you can't bank on those <laughs> moments? But two was all she wrote this time. As Gatterada, as you say, with a nice long angle on the lion there, finds the last man and closes it out for Cyclops. So 4-1 on the half, and Dan Wong here in real danger here, Des, of a 5-1 half as they head on to the attack. It's not pretty, is it? I do want to commend again Cyclops making use of these operators because it's all good and saying, oh, well, they got them there for it's anti-Rome, right? The use case for it was more, you know, droning them running back into sight. Gatterada called out the EE1D a couple of times on his push in from Master Bedroom to get himself to top red. And along the way, once he got there, he didn't, you know, push in the site, start throwing nades or whip out the gone six to destroy something. He just held the angle. Didn't stand there peeking it. Just stayed enough that if someone did come out of Matt's room, he would see them running across and would find himself a free or potentially if anyone came up the red stairs. And as the rest of his team was setting up, you have Black Ray getting himself on study, Anaton setting himself up on the study window, for example. He just played patiently and waited. It's almost like they were waiting for a milestone to pass before he could spring into action and make his move. And look at the patience that paid off. He got that freebie onto the rotating player coming back up red stairs eventually. So Cyclops showing excellently in my mind how to deal with an aggressive Roan team here. Just take what you need, play it patient and force them to come to you once you've got that small numbers advantage. Really well played by the Japanese side. Round six then, going to be heading downstairs this time to Dining Kitchen. It's going to be the final attempt from Dan Wonkia 
here to try and get another defensive round on the board. Last time out when they tried to defend Dining Kitchen was back in round one, and it was a little bit of a failure. Cyclops were able to get in there, take control of almost anything they wanted before pushing into sight and getting the final two kills. So Dan Monkey are going to have to do things differently here. They lost the man in the basement. It was Rin who took that opening death last time around, and they need to just adapt, they need to change, they need to understand that Cyclops have got a good understanding of what they're going for. Another Rotero drone going into a mute there, just really struggling with those jammers so far. Yeah, it's kind of what Mute's designed for, right, ultimately, is to be these anti Rotero devices. Same can be said for the Pest, although we've seen Mute, I think, alone in a good number of these rounds. So it's a one that you wouldn't look at and say we've seen continuously, but has been brought out a number of times um, over the recent weeks. In this game, at least, it's only in this round we've seen the Mozzie so far, though. Tazusi looking for that north-sided entrance. They're looking to get themselves into Master and Bedroom for the verticality. It's Katsang who's actually going to open things up with the kill onto Gatorada, taking the E1D scanner off the board. And yes, he manages to hit Anaton with a serious turn and burn there. Just takes a few shots in his flanks, but then able to find the kill. Quartered onto Black Ray, and this one's looking much better for Damwon Kiedes. They're having the run of things as Woogie Man steps up and catches the man at the top of basement stairs. Just coming down Astro himself. Now Suzuki gets one, but surely it's going to be impactless. He does have all the time in the world, but Dan Wonkia right now know exactly where he's located, where he's trying to push from, and the bullets keep raining in around him. He tries to keep his head down for the time being, but surely this is a matter of time until Dan Wonkia put him out of his misery. I'm thinking that, yeah, 15, well, 1 minute 15 on the clock does mean there's a lot of time to play with, but I fear Suzuki has very little time left. Gets swung out on as well, putting him down even lower. About 40 HP still to his name, and Rin does find the closing kill. A near flawless round coming out. The four players still alive at the end for down one. Gives a, I don't want to say a comfortable end to the half, but one they will greatly appreciate. Otherwise, you're going into the attack at five and one. It's not really how it should stack up. The one thing I do want to see is how these first couple of attacks go for the side of Dan Wonkir, though, because Cyclops played a wonderful game of restricting and constricting Dan Wonkir throughout that entire first half. I'm wondering if there's going to be a similar ploy coming out from Dan Wonkir on their attack to stop players like Black Ray, who we all know to be problematic out on their own doing just that. Looking towards players like Gatorada, Iagator, Anaton, all capable of being those big fraggers. And in fact, they're not many the players that we'll talk about. Suzu C kind of sits in the background as the support player that we don't normally see being hyper-aggressive. In this game, he's been quite close to the action despite playing an awful lot of a banner. Think of him on the Master Repel, for example. At that point, he was on three kills, collected a fourth onto Rin as he tried to swing onto the window. So even playing a massive part in this game as the more supportive player on side. Kota and Yas so far able to team up for 15 kills. Dan Wonkia, they've had a good round at the right time, Des. That's what I will say there. Round six, if you're going to have two winning rounds on your defence, one of them is going to be a 1v3 and one of them is going to be a convincing win. The time to have that convincing round is in round six to try and flip that momentum coming into the second half. That is the best round that we've seen Dan Wonkia play so far. Now, Cyclops, they're going to be setting up on the top floor for their defence here. They've got the Goyo shield just focusing into study. It's one that we've started to see a little bit more of and it just allows a bit of aggression and as I say that, Black Ray is going to thank you very much no, for that, Black Ray. He's going to move it. It's just going to allow him to peek from somewhere else instead. He's still trying to do the same thing with it. So he's moved it to allow peeks to come through that soft wall onto the study door and it's all about controlling study and slowing down and preventing that south sided push. I want to know where that third... I can't remember who's observing this one. I think it's easy. Can you go and find out where the third laser gate is for me? I think he popped it up the north somewhere because there's two inside a study. And I don't think I saw it go down. I was going to say, I didn't see it go on this door, but he ran like straight downstairs. Oh, because it's on the double door that leads down towards 90. Okay, then. I imagine more to make sure there's no, you know, nades being yeeted down there, for example. That's all. The Rotero coming in very quickly and clearing out a Vulcan shield, clearing out the deployable at the top of main stairs. Flores wasting absolutely no time here. Courted, he's been finding kills. He's now finding utilities. Difficult to stop. He tries to get in for the ADS, but that is an important moment from Gatorada there. Able to step out and find a quick shot onto the Rotero drone, which is just going to help protect him from all three of them stacked up in the same place. This is the reason Courted was going for it again, and that was important. If that one Rotero manages to anchor Des, it takes out all three ADSs and there is no protection for that main stairs player. So extremely important. We could see this now being a sticking point for the round. They're always expecting the push to follow up on the back of the Rotero. Oh, sees his head. Oh, 
Beautiful, guys beautiful. From beautiful. Yes. Just baiting it out because they knew there were two players there, knew that one was likely to peak from halfway up the second tier of stairs. And now it's just Gatorada holding Lay down, who, by the way, has already gone through all three smokes. They thought there was a push coming and didn't realize it was only Retiro's. They've now kind of paid for that in the cost of utility. That is the last smoke being used and consumed. Sure enough, there is no push coming in, but it doesn't mean they won't try and burn out these ADSs. Up they come. The Naden hand, the swing coming out from the smoke, but doesn't see the man. They see him first. It's a great main stairs push coming out of Dan One Kia, baiting out the smokes and killing two. I like that. The Nade going in there and just forcing the smoke wide, but there was somebody watching that angle at all times, and Dan One Kia looking like a different side right now, Des, in the last couple of rounds. Absolutely clinical so far in their clearance of those stairs. Black Ray looking to get aggressive onto anybody he can, but he can't can't find anybody. Try as he might, he's going to find a Gemini decoy on the red stairs. He's about to be pushed by Katsang, though. Cannot find him as the headshot comes in. It's all up to Anaton. One versus five. Surely a damn one key around here. He's being pushed from every which way. It's Rin who steps in on the ash and gets that final kill. Damn one key. They bring it back to 3 4 now, and this one is game on. Just a little bit. Yeah, really impressive attack coming out actually and it's the it was the main stairs that really impressed me the most but then how they rotate players over to red to go for the clear on that side as well you know cyclops essentially bleeding members out the whole way across the map have now got to try something a little bit different and that different we spoke about the mirror not you know not being banned out in the ban phase making it through we didn't see it employed at all by dan one kia but for the side of cyclops it is going to be a different story imagine you might see those committed upstairs if they stick it and just like you in the last round talking about that goyo they've changed it away for a pulse of course they have. It's going to be a sixth pick from Mira to Pulse. Just playing around with it a little bit, but as you say, just looking to maybe favour information. Still with the Nitro in the hand, um, but just favouring that information. No surprise, considering... Still cheated. Considering <laughs> on the dining. Um, they're going to bring that along. We'll see how Ayagata puts that to use. We did see the vertical Nitro kill coming out of Dan Wan Kia on their defensive half. We'll see if Cyclops can maybe match up to that. They look like this stacking up and preparing for the push into laundry there it is and it has been a lot of the focus recently pantry has sort of dipped off a little bit we always used to have that pushing towards pantry and towards directly into kitchen but we don't see as much of that nowadays no i'm keen to see exactly how much of this setup extends out towards the west as well Reinforcements going down inside of living does mean that you might see a player or two roaming out that far black ray currently the one who is set up in there and uh, if he can do a bit of damage on the south side, even just waste a bit of time, it'll be a wonderful start to this round for the side of Cyclops. The down one here, though, I imagine vertical might be the play, given there is that sledge on side. There's a four nades on side to still play around as well. And you'll probably see Kota trying to push inside a pantry to get the single wall opened up and just expose everything inside a kitchen. Make sure the attackers are sweating a little bit ace on their defense of the site. Opening kill comes in from Katasang onto Black Ray and Dan Wan Kia. They are not slowing down, Des. This is a runaway train now, and they've got it back on track. And they are steaming along, picking up kill after kill. And round after round, they've got two on the bounce, and they're going to be looking for a third. Gatarada wanting to get aggressive on the bandit. He's still on that top floor roam. Dan Wan Kia wanting to get that vertical supremacy. They've got the sledge of Katsang. Has taken a little bit of chip damage, so he needs to be careful with himself. Not too much use if they get in upstairs and don't have the soft destruction capability to get those vertical angles but there's also going to be a focus on getting this wall open the nade will come out take out the two bandits probably pushing the range a little bit there des but I, I could feel what was coming but he gets away with it nonetheless gatarada finds katsang so that's the sledge gone that's quite a big kill the trade does come in from rin but they're now limited on their soft destruction they do still have the ash though so the breach charges will be able to do some of that job on the breaching rounds you're looking towards they've only got two to play with of course they've got to be very selective on where those are used and you still got to watch out for the c4 coming out of the pulse who by the way is yielding a shotgun because why the hell not when you run out of the c4s you still got that as a possible option and yes with a cheeky little cam here as well i think just sat on top of the light means it's very hard to see we'll have an idea as to what's going on below and can feed them a bit of information here through laundry nade in hand I was going to say he needs to be wary. He might find out his own drone if he's not too careful. But in comes the push. The pulse surely, surely is looking laterally every now and then to know exactly what's going on. 
but still Yas being very, very cautious here. All it's going to take is a scan out towards Laundry to know there's one or two starting to square up that way and they can do some damage. Suzu C moving his way back up basement and likely, I'd imagine, looking to pro provide a bit of support out towards the east where all this pressure is coming from. That whole push from Yas was just designed to take out specific utility there. He needed to dump the nade in, but he needed to make sure that it was safe to do so. Anaton holding that angle, just changing actually, looking in towards Laundry, but knows that there's pressure as well. They don't know that Iagate is pushing up, traded out after he managed to get a shotgun kill, two versus one. Courted and Yas, they need to team up here, Des Suzuki on low health. He's gone down to basement. There's an opportunity, a clear opportunity to get the diffuser down and courted like a true professional, gets in and takes it. And that is going to be now a retake. One versus two, the drone taken out. May well just alert them as well. Dan one Kia that Suzuki is pushing from Pantry. They're going to be holding down their angles. Look at how small those silhouettes are. They're miles away here, trying to get as far back as possible to just hold long angles and make his life difficult. Surely he's not going to try and stick this. He's just looking to bait them out, is he not? Nope, he's going for it. Courted steps in. He's on hand. He is the sound of the diffuser being disabled. Steps in and gets the final kills. Dan one Kia. They take another round and they'll level us up. If nothing else, this game is just proof in the pudding of there are two halves to a game of Siege, right? It looked dire in that first half for Dan one Kia when Cyclops walked away with four attacks and we thought, oh no, this is going horribly wrong for the boys here. But this was the point, to be fair, the fourth round into the half, which this one will become, where things started to switch and change around. Sorry, third round coming in here, where things then change around a little bit and you start to see a bit of fight back normally from the other side. Aviator is going to be where we step into... This is the one I look at, Ace, and think, really, for Cyclops, you need to be getting this win in here. If Dan one pull ahead with the momentum behind them, you start to sweat for those last couple of rounds, and it could be yet another defeat for, Dan, uh, for Cyclops, sorry, who currently find themselves second from bottom here in APAC North. Which is not something that we would have expected to find ourselves same after oh, no. that performance in Mexico, after stage two. Let's not forget, for anybody coming in and joining us, uh, I know we've picked up a lot of new people liking to watch APAC after what you saw out of the teams at the Mexico Major, and quite rightly, because we've got some real talent here in APAC North and indeed APAC South, of course, as well. But in stage two, it's worth pointing out that Cyclops went seven and zero. They were unbeaten in stage two and then they've come out here and a second from bottom what a turnaround it has been it is just absolutely unreal how they've dropped off and they just can't seem to find and deliver the same sort of performances and this for me is quite indicative des of the sort of struggles that they've had they come in here so strong they were 4-1 up at a point and dan wonkia have reined them back into 4-0 and now they are seriously on the back for. Got to call it some magic of their own on the defensive side here, but for Dan Wonkia, it's an opportunity if nothing else. They are only one point above Cyclops, mind you. Cyclops are seventh, Dan Wan are fifth with five points. Talon and other team that are currently in third place with eight and then Fnatic on six. So that gap between last place on four points and third place on eight is incredibly close, which is what makes this such an important game. Two big kills, two important kills in a game like this are the ones that you want to be finding. Black Ray being disruptive on the Alibi. We got used to seeing that an awful lot at the Major. Now it's what more damage they can do. They've got those two kills here and could look to pull their way back to site. Happy they've made it a five versus three. I imagine Dan Wonkia also want to try and find something here to make up for losses they've already endured. Very positive so far for Cyclops. Exactly the sort of start that they needed. They've lost three rounds in a row. So coming out and getting a nice man advantage. We've all been there. You get those couple of early kills and the team just settles down a bit. Now, Anaton, he's going to spot out the Nomad of Woogie Man coming through bathroom there. This should be an absolute freebie for Black oh. Ray as he moves in challenges, just misses his shot as Woogie Man sort of waves himself around trying to get out of the way Can't of that yokai drone doesn't know where it is in comes what? the challenge and eventually <laughs> black ray manages to finish the kill off that's going to be woogie man down and yas finds himself in a 1v5 we've seen a 1v3 out of him so far but you've got to say that this must surely be beyond him even with his ability it's going to be extremely difficult for yas now he does have time on his side and He's just waiting on the outside for the time being. See if he can get anybody to challenge him. Get a cheap kill or two to start things off. This is nothing like the last three rounds where it's just been out and out domination on the road from, on the road from Cyclops. Sorry, Black Ray especially on the 3Ks waiting for the man. <laughs> That's what you get punished for being a little bit cheeky there on the 2-3 peak coming through. Yas finding one back going 12-4 and four so far in the game. But this looks to be one of those rounds that will not be going the way of Dan Wonkia.
Yeah, I think that's fair to say. The Gemini decoy is going to go in. For Yas right now, it's all about just trying to bait out a couple of kills, see if you can catch anybody out. There's also going to be a lot of talking going on in the team. It's almost an unofficial tactical time out here as they're just going to be chatting in the background about what they've seen, what they need to change, how they can get this one over the line. Because the thing is here, they start running out of opportunities. Yas now with 15 seconds to go, is going to look to push forward one versus four at the minute. But you can see that Cyclops are just being super cautious here and quite rightly so they're holding themselves back they're defenders they can let the clock win the round for them there's absolutely no need to push this that's going to send us now to 5-4 in favour of Cyclops to get themselves back in the lead but more importantly more importantly they've managed to stop the storm that was Dan Wonkia rolling downhill gathering pace one thing I will say is in round four when you know Dan Wonkia won narrowly with one man left alive it was Yas in the one versus three we did say you can't always rely on one person to do all the work and a lot of that was black ray on the roam up to the north albeit it did start with two of them up there and the yokais also coming in huge for them so we've got to see a more dominant round coming out of them now that breaks the momentum let's see if they can roll it forward into another round win dining and kitchen going to be the site that we head to in round 10 so we stepped to just a couple ago so far completely avoiding trophy and statuary and we commented on this before dining kitchen is becoming a much more popular site for a good number of teams and trophy and statuary being served and um, being swerved sorry in many instances yeah it has dropped off in popularity a little bit um, it depends team to team some people um, do still like to pick it up and take it but uh, certainly Cyclops here looking to favour dining and kitchen so we'll head downstairs three nitros in hand a lot of explosives on the side of Cyclops they're going to be looking for that vertical denial obviously expecting to see Dan Wonkia get themselves in above Katsang has brought the sledge did last time was unable to get into that area in control alive so we didn't see too much use of the verticality but Dan Wonkia was still able to get the job done and it was through an ingress in laundry of course, Gatorada down to the south as well. No big reinforcements being stacked up down here. Refer back again to the games earlier on today. Talon versus Fav. We saw teams committing reinforcements, shields, you name it. There's quite a bit being dedicated down to the south, even Banshees, to try and hold out on the Roma feel here. And I think maybe Gatorada feels the same. It would be a little bit much to commit all of that down to the south when you're defending on the other floor at the other side of the map. Just, just a... A one extension too far almost. And more it's the early start here, I think, to try and pick up any drones that might come rolling in through study and back his way in towards the team. And you can see pretty much every member of Dan Wonkia was in drones just up to a couple of seconds ago with only, I think, Woogie the one being off because he was throwing down a couple of air jabs. So as you see, just on the roam underneath there, sort of semi-roam, quite near sight, but just looking to have that threat potentially there to be able to head up Astro or just uh, keep his options open. A nice nitro tossed into bathroom, for example, when those angles start getting opened up could be successful. Katsang for the time being, trying to get established inside a master, just being peeked out from all, towards the 90 corridor and the statuary side of things. Just a couple of shots raining through there just to back him off. Yas clearing out the deployable shield that we saw him do exactly the same with last time. They haven't cleared off the bandit batteries yet. I'm sure that may be the next job, but... They're not going to get that wall breached until they do, and here we go. That will be cleared off. There'll be a nade comes over from Yas now, but they do have Ayagator there this time. He does have an impact nade left, so oh, no. I was going to say, could look for oh. trick instead as he tries to go route one and get the kills, but gets shut down, courted, very alert and alive, ready to go for the breach, finds the maestro, and then opens up the wall. Strong start from Dan Wonkia. Yeah, comfortable as well. Good composure coming out of Dan Wonkia. Rain on the push in here. Finally gets the win against Gatorada, even with the Yokai's coming in for a bit of robot wars. However, taken out as they were trying to drop back down through the hatch. One remains for Anaton to make good use of here. And finally, they see that drone that has been set on the lamp in the last couple of attacks of this site. We should start to open things up for Dan Wonk here. They've got the vertical control. They've got the numbers advantage. The only thing starting to run away from them is time ace. It certainly is. They need to be very aware of that clock. There's still plenty of seconds left for now, but they will find them drip, drip, dripping away very, very quickly as this one goes. And 
Time is a funny thing. It seems to move quicker and quicker the closer that you get to the end of the round. 30 seconds left to go. Dan Wonky are looking to aggress, but they haven't managed to find any further kills yet. They've got the breaches open that they need, but they need to start thinking about getting this diffuser in sight. It's still in the hands of Courted here, but I don't think he's in a position to get the plant down just yet. Now, Suzuki looking to move up, catches the air jab there. That's going to tell them that he's on the Astro stairs and Woogie Man plays it beautifully. It's his own utility that he plays off. He manages to double down and find a second onto Black Ray, who got Katsang in the midst. Courted oh. getting the diffuser down. Anerton misses his shots. Woogie Man with a triple on the round. Big play from the Nomad. Enables the win for Dan Wonkia. And Des, we're going all the way to 12. Woogie as well going on an adventure there in the basement. You saw him enter off the pantry side, came all the way below up. And sure enough, Suzu C wasn't expecting anyone to come up from the basement, was instead turning his attention skyward. Cyclops understandably calling in their tactical timeout here as things are on a nice edge. It's 5-5 between these two teams. Cyclops only finding one round in the half so far. They need another from somewhere to guarantee at the very least that overtime is on the cards. That's the aim. Um, you know, that's that's the aim for them now is to get this locked down, get the opportunity to get that match point and also just maybe alleviate a little bit of the pressure, knowing that no matter what happens, you're going to have that opportunity to fight. So if you're not familiar with our structure here, we play best of 12, so 6 all would be an even split and would see us go through to overtime. If anybody manages to win the next two rounds and go 7-5, they'll claim a full three points. If it goes to 6 all and we head into that overtime, though, Instead of three points and zero points, we will see that change with the winner picking up two points and the losers managing to secure themselves one point as a little bonus for making it into overtime. So we'll see if that is the case or not. This round is going to be particularly important. It feels like the momentum still lies with Dan Wonkia here. They seem to be the aggressors in most situations. They're winning a lot of the gunfights. If they get this round, it's going to take a... Big, big effort from Cyclops to get themselves into overtime. So for me, Cyclops really need to be winning this. And there's their in trophy statuary. And they have a mirror, the one we spoke about earlier on. It got six picked away a little earlier on. Whereas at least here it's being brought along and committed. So I'm hoping these more static positions with a little bit more reinforcement behind them. And of course, information being passed back to the team could help them, you know, delay and push off and detract Dan Wonkia from pushing certain angles. At least that's the hope for them, no doubt. C4 holes over the top as well, ready for anything that might come in through Master. But I'm wondering where that second one gets deployed as well, because of course that is still in back pocket. Could see one facing into Astro if they want to play it out that way, or go a little bit more wild and look to put it elsewhere around the map. Around the map is the answer, south side. <laughs> around the map, straight to that south side. I was just about to say how how much are they going to apply? How much utility manpower it's are they going it. to apply to the south-sided push? Now, it looks like Dan Wonkia are sort of mounting up ready for a north-sided challenge. We've got four over that side, including the hard breach of Courted. So they're going to look to get that mirror window inside a master bedroom opened up, I would expect. Yas is also working over that side. So right now, that utility on the south side could be wasted, but of course it does it does just hold them off from the potential for that rotation. Now, the pulse is down in the basement. Gatterard is just feeding information back into his team here, telling them that they're stacking up on the north side, wanting to come in towards Astro. Uh, he's been seen, though. He's going to have to dip himself away. And this is the beauty of basement. There's a lot of little tunnels to wriggle away down there. By the way, Iagator is still doing setup. nearly 60 seconds into the start of the round. He's been using his shotgun, like, non-stop. And I'm kind of paying myself in a corner here, but Black Ray's gone for the MP5K, so everything has come down to Iagator. Finally gets himself finished off, and now can start going for gunfights. Finish the setup and straight into a round of siege, straight into gunfights. That's what you want. Oh, you'll love to see it. It's absolutely non stop action. He's chased those damn Wonkia players away from Kitchen for the time being, so that is going to prevent some of that verticality that was getting opened up, and you can see exactly why it was being done, but the damage has been done along with it, Des. They haven't got the mute jammer, but they've got the the mirror window open so that's going to allow a bit of access to potentially take that mute jammer down but they need to do something about it because right now it oh, is man. holding them off from opening up the wall 
I think Rin's been sought out by the Paul Scanner here as well, but doesn't get taken out, doesn't really able to do so. Anderton finding COVID from across in Astro. COVID, COVID, sorry, across Hopefully inside not. of Astro. No, apparently not, absolutely not, I'm sure. But does find the one man that he's been looking for in the start of this round. And that now lets them know that Astro is being held and they've got to clear him out. Iagator finally moved out as the mirror who's hanging out on the downstairs mirror. If you remember, four versus four, 50 seconds to go. And so far, it feels a little bit like down one are being contained. It certainly does. They've still not managed to get the wall open. They do have the line of sight in through the mirror, so it maybe makes that opening a little bit redundant and not quite as essential. But Yas is trying to push here. Anaton well aware of the man inside the bathroom, and it's not going to be an easy fight to take as he has a little peek, and this shot's exchanged, and somehow does. Yas manages to find the win on the gunfight. Gets Anaton down and out. 24 seconds off to go, but the clock is ticking away. Then it could be Dan Wonkia's biggest enemy here. Yas, he's looking to get aggressive into Site four versus two as Rin gets one onto Gatorada. No it's all slipping away from Cyclops right now. Cat Sang is inside a site. He's getting the diffuser down. Black Ray was downstairs with a nitro in hand, but so was Rin. And they had a gun in hand. All that was needed to end the round. And that's gonna be Dan Wan Kia now with the opportunity to close this one out. Six five match point. And you've got to say the advantage does lie with them. Yeah, Yas rocking up and getting that kill onto Iagator was the equivalent of walking up to a house's front door and booting it straight off the hinges because the north side control is removed. No one's safe playing inside of either sides when the push can come in from that direction whilst Master is also being contested and everything just crumbles for that point forward for Cyclops. It's 6-5. Cyclops barely able to scrape around together, but this needs to be the one. If they're going to see this continue and move us through into overtime, it needs to happen now. Aviator Games is the site of choice. It has been dicey for them so far. It was the one round they won, but I would wager that round win had nothing to do with the site itself because it was the 3K for Black Ray in the extension up in towards Master Bedroom. So it's going to have to be something special here. Let's not forget as well the excellent attack that we saw back in round seven coming out of Dan Wan Kia. Near flawless from the cells, the bunker bus coming into the main stairs to rotate to red. They've played it flawlessly. So all Cyclops have got a whim to ride on here is that extended hold is the aggressive roaming play, so maybe that's going to be the setup they need. Maybe it is, as you say. It can't always come down to those hero players, as you say, it time after time after time. And Cyclops, they can't fall back on it now. They've got to get in there and find those kills early on. Whoever it is that gets them, it's going to take some strong teamwork. And if you remember last time around, Dan Wonkia had a great attack onto main stairs here when they were successful attacking onto Aviator Games back in round number seven. It was a wonderful clearance where they just got so hyper aggressive onto those main stairs. There was absolutely nowhere that the Cyclops players could hide. They managed to pick two of them up on the stairs and get the kills. And it really was beautiful aggression coming out of Dan Wonkia. Now then, in goes quartered with the Rotero straight away towards those main stairs. Think about last time how he sent them in through Art Studio as well. Now he's got two angles of attack. He can go from below or in going through the top side and try and get rid of those ADSs. For now, though, shields, nom, 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 nom. Rotero's love shields. Second one going down in the round. And that's a lot of protection removed away from the side of Cyclops because we know how powerful those shields inside of maps can normally be. They don't have that protection anymore. And here it comes. If it jumps over here, it'll make the player move and get rid of all three Beautiful. ADSs. Freebie boys, you've hit the jackpot. Absolutely beautiful play. Jackpot is the right word, Des. Ding, 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 ding. We've cleaned out May stairs. And that is going to be ours to push on to now. Another Look one. at this from the, the Rotero. Yokai as well. That is just one of the best Rotero performances I've seen out of a Flores. And I'm excited about it, Des, because it is so, so valuable. Well, count it. Three shields that were brought along by the smoke, the Alibi and the Echo, plus getting a Yokai. Three plus ADSs. Three ADSs. This is why so many teams and players around the world like this operator is broken. Four is so many and it removes so much, but part of it comes back on the other side, you know? There's no mute on side. That's the reason a lot of teams bring mute is to deny away things like the Flores. But without anyone, I think they looked at it and said, well, we haven't seen the Flores be brought along in this half, so why keep on playing mute? This was the round they dropped away from it after playing it for the two prior, and it stung them massively. Katsang's got himself in a battle with Black Ray. He's just locked in a death grip down here, Des. Just waiting for the 
man to try and push inside of Library, but he's not going to do for the time being. He's going to use the bailiff to just drop the hatch there and try to come up from an alternative angle. They need to be careful of Black Ray and they need to keep him at bay somehow. They can't allow him onto the flank to make an impact. We saw the impact of the Rotero's Rin was able to push up onto main stairs completely unimpeded, as we oh, can see, being are. joined by Katsang. The push is starting now. There's Sledge getting in, opening up that 90 corridor wall. 30 seconds left to go. We're poised for a bloodbath. It's the time that worries me the most, though. You've still got to burn your way through the smokes that are coming out. The second one and the last one from Gadarada committed towards the bottom side of 90. They've done all the hard work. They've cleared the utility, but the kills aren't there. Here we go. The one-for-one -one trade coming in. Rin stepping forward, tagged in from Volt, but sees the man to the right, finds the easy kill down. Katsang, another one. A four versus two coming in for down one with 10 seconds to play. Black Race strikes back as does Gadarada. The two versus two stepping in. They've got to clear them out now. Shotgun and hand shut down. A two versus one. But where is Black Ray? Yes, sees him. Down one get the shut down. They block the overtime and they defeat Cyclops 7-5. Absolute chaos at the end in Aviator Games. But Dan one Kia, they were the eye of the storm. They were the ones able to find the kills and close this one out. It felt for all the life of them that they had that second half. They had the momentum and they kept a hold of it, getting themselves an important win. Yes, 14 and 4. It's another mammoth day coming out Man's of the Starmac. a monster. It's unbelievable and arguably the most consistent that we are currently seeing. Unbelievable performance overall. You know, you've got to look back at that last round, though. Flores, if you want any example watch, of what a Flores can do... Just watch that last round. That is the round to watch back. So much destruction, but I was still nervous in those final 20 seconds at 5 versus 5 that they weren't going to do it. But they've done it. They've got themselves the three points, and that propels Dan Wonkia into the top floor. Cyclops still wading at the bottom of the Swamp here in 7th place things are not looking pretty let's go to a quick break and when we come back uh, analysts will break that game down for you